What is chalk? Does it grow on trees? Is it gluten-free? I'm sorry, I'm lactose intolerant. Do you have any dairy-free chalk options? Well, it turns out that chalk has many uses. Most importantly, it's used by climbers to dry out their hands. Sweaty palms? You idiots just use chalk. Now, in the sport of rock climbing, chalk is everywhere. Literally. With dozens of different brands, all with their own unique formula. Extra sweaty hands? This is the chalk for you. Dry skin? Try this one. I have eczema. There's a chalk for that. What about me? I'm blind. Do you have a chalk for me? Uh, our special recipe. We have that right here. But with the massive popularity of chalk in rock climbing, has anyone stopped to ask, is this really the best there is? After all, you don't use chalk to dry off after a shower. You use a towel. Why don't we just grind up towels and use that instead of chalk? Well, it turns out that someone already thought of that. No, not the towel thing, but a different chalk-free alternative for rock climbers. And it's called silica xylolate. But the question is, does it actually work? Normally, you can find these small packets in food containers and serve as a tasty treat when you're finished eating. But it's the contents of these small packets that may change rock climbing forever. You actually just eat that. Yeah. Before we can talk about silica xylolate and how it works, we need to talk about climbing chalk. Climbing chalk is made up of magnesium carbonate, and it's used to absorb moisture in your hands so you don't slip. This chalk works so well, in fact, that it's used in gymnastics and powerlifting. But there's one major problem that big chalk doesn't want you to know. Magnesium carbonate isn't chalk. It's salt. That's right, big chalk has been lying to you, and the whole climbing industry has just been playing along. Chalk bag? Wrong. It's actually a salt bag. Having trouble on that climb? Don't worry. I've got a salt brush that I keep in my salt bucket. I'll have that cleaned up in just a jiffy. Ah, there you go. Don't forget to salt up. While the two may look the same, real chalk is made up of calcium carbonate found in limestone. This substance is composed of the shells of microscopic organisms, like this one. Well, hello there. I don't believe we've met. Now besides lying about climbing salt being chalk, climbing chalk manufacturers actually do a good job. Magnesium carbonate is very, very effective at absorbing moisture, and each chalk manufacturer has their own unique blend. About two years ago now, I tested over 15 different climbing chalk products and found that Rugna's Magdust was by far the most effective. Now they sponsored this channel and paid for this entire video. Win. But for the past two years, I couldn't help but wonder if magnesium carbonate was really the best there is. People have been trying to find something better for years, but it just seems that nothing can beat climbing salt. During that video two years ago, I even tested Black Diamond's Pure Gold, which is mesoporous magnesium carbonate upsalate. I don't know what that is, but it cost $150 for 100 grams. But it too failed to even come close to the performance of 100% pure magnesium carbonate. So it seemed that athletes around the world would be stuck with boring old regular chalk for eternity until somebody discovered fumed silica. Wait a minute, Steve, I just had an idea. Hmm? What if we were to take quartz, grind it up into little pieces of sand, then continuously refine and filter that sand through a magnetic filter until each particle was no larger than 125 microns? What's a micron? Then we would take the resulting particles, run them through a blazing hot plasma arc, and collect the resulting compound. Okay. But then we take that resulting compound and replace some of the surface hydroxyl groups with trimethyl siloxy. Why? I just want to see what happens. And thus, silica xylolate was born. A sand-like substance that is incredibly lightweight, while having many useful properties that are used across multiple industries, like being extremely hydrophobic. I can't believe it's 2025 and we're still dealing with these types of issues. Now, fumed silica has been around for a very long time, with its main application being in cosmetics. Now, eventually, someone figured out that you could use this product on your hands to improve grip strength. And where do all great ideas go to succeed? Shark Tank. What do all athletes need to perform at their peak? Three things, Greg. They need focus, training, and grip. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> it turns out that not only can silica xylolate prevent you from accidentally hurling projectiles across the room, but it's also very effective for weightlifting. The sharks were so impressed with this product that they immediately invested $400,000, and now you find silica xylolate everywhere. Powerlifting? Try silica xylolate. Skateboarding? What are you doing with grip tape? Everyone knows for the best grip, you use silica xylolate. People are finding any and every possible thing to use this for. But the real question is, does it work for rock climbing? 
So in the pursuit of science, Rumna sent me their new product, Maglock, a silica silylate amino acid blend with a little bit of mag dust sprinkled in. In the industry, we call that the Magnus Kiss. <laughs> so I brought the Maglock to the gym to see what all the fuss was about. We're back at Old Betsy, two years since last time we filmed on this thing. We're gonna use this to test the chalks friction like we did last time. Uh, you know, it's funny to think this ball is what got me my Rungni sponsorship and might be what loses me my Rungni sponsorship now, so. Now it's time for the most important part, the opening. Ooh. <laughs> it's not chalk. There's some other stuff in there. This was clearly something very different than climbing chalk. Inhaling this strange substance hit the lungs differently than your standard climbing chalk, and the consistency felt more like sand than your typical climbing chalk. But the only real way to test its friction was on Big Bertha. I started with the tried and true, mag dust. On my right hand, I was able to hang for a very long time. The superior grip of mag dust made easy work of Bertha. Five and a half seconds. It was a tough time to beat, but if the silica silylate was everything it said it was, this should be a close contest. So I washed my hands and applied a thin coat of Maglock to see how good it really was. What the fuck? It's just gone. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it doing something? My hands are getting like really sticky. All right, see how they do on their own. Is that better or worse? That was about the same. I think Maybe. that might have been longer. We probably should have timed it. The mag lock outperformed the mag dust by over one second. But I wasn't satisfied, okay? I refused to believe that this ground up rock was somehow better than my precious mag dust, which is also just ground up rocks. I went again, this time left handed. The mag lock was strong, but this time I only made it to five and a half seconds. So I ran off to wash my hands again and went back for the mag dust. Left handed, only three seconds. It turns out that my left hand is just weak. Back to the right hand. My arms are getting tired now, but the mag dust holds strong. Four and a half seconds. I race back to wash my hands again and apply another coating of maglock. At this point, I'm exhausted, and my right wrist feels three inches longer than it did when I started. Surely, the maglock wouldn't win. Ah, oh, dude, that's definitely better. That's, that's so crazy. weird. That's what it looks like. There's and, nothing. And it's performing better. The maglock was noticeably better. Across every single test I did, the maglock outperformed. Even on wooden 10 millimeter crimps, the maglock won. It just works. And to explain why this might be happening, we have to do some science. And as you all know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with me personally, I do have a bit of a collegiate chemistry background. Um, as a film major, we studied a few episodes of Breaking Bad here and there for you know filmmaking purposes, and I think I learned a thing or two. Now, when you go to the store and buy food, sometimes they come with little preservation packets inside, and these packets come in two main variants. Iron-based packets for absorbing oxygen, and silica-based packets for absorbing moisture. If we cut open the iron-based packets that we found in this bag of Jack Link's teriyaki-flavored beef jerky, we can see it is full of an iron uh, compound, <laughs> alloy, something, science. This is used to absorb any extra oxygen that gets in the packets to keep the beef jerky good for longer. Now if we do the same thing and cut open our silica preservation packet, we will find Fuck me. <laughs> Okay, apparently silica gel is the bounciest fucking substance known to man. They got everywhere. But these are actually little candies that are in your food. <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't eat those. This is silica gel. While it's not the same thing as fumed silica or silica silylate, it's still extremely water absorbent. And in fact, it can absorb up to 40% of its own weight in water. And another cool thing, if you pour water on it, it does this. Holy shit, it's getting, getting crazy. Now you might be wondering, <laughs> it's just getting everywhere, fuck me. Um, is this what you're rubbing on your hands with silica silylate? No, it's not, but this is just to demonstrate some of the water absorbing 
um, capabilities of silica-based products. I think it's common down here. Oh! Science. All right, we're going goggles on, ladies and gentlemen, since I got blasted in the eye last time. Safety first. Let's see how absorbent this really is. Can this explode? Like if it builds up enough pressure or something? I don't know how this works. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm not standing next to this. All right, that was a little underwhelming. I was kind of hoping it would explode. But now that we've found out how absorbent silica gel is, it's time to find out how absorbent silica silylate is. And to show you that, we're gonna make something called dry water. Now what dry water okay. is, is when- This is where things start to fall apart silylate. a little bit. I saw this video by a channel called Action Lab where he made this substance called dry water by mixing fumed silica with water. And he ended up with this putty-like substance that was wet, but it was dry at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. It was called dry water. But for some reason, when I tried to do this experiment, the molecules weren't moleculing or whatever they're supposed to do, and I couldn't get it to work. Dry water. I even went as far as to reach out to Action Lab in his YouTube comment section asking if silica silylate would work the same as fumed silica, and he didn't respond. You know, it's sad to see that big YouTubers don't even take the time anymore to check comments on five-year-old videos. Now that being said, I should add that the silica silylate was still extremely absorbent. You can see here that the end result was extremely dry for how much water I actually put in there. But the problem was the mag dust in the mag lock blend, I think caked everything together and didn't allow it to properly turn into the dry water I wanted. While my science experiment was a colossal failure, it was time for the most important test of all. The thing is when you climb, you sweat. And when you sweat, you slip. We don't want that. But the thing with chalk is it sticks to your hands. So as you climb and sweat, the chalk on your hands absorbs that sweat and falls off onto the holds. But silica silylate does not. It does an excellent job of stripping your hands of oil and moisture, but after it's applied, it's gone. While the mag dust may be a generous lover, the mag lock doesn't stick around to cuddle afterwards. So the only way to really test the mag lock's longevity was to do some sport climbing. If I really wanted to see what this stuff could do, I had to push myself to my absolute limit. And so I climbed, no chalk on my hands and no bag on my waist, just a thin coating of silica silylate in a dream. And as I climbed, my grip never faltered. To my surprise, I was able to make it all the way to the top of the sport wall without my hands getting sweaty. I even managed to down climb the entire wall before the mag lock was gone. Now with what you've seen so far in this video, you may be impressed but you ain't seen nothing yet. If you watch competition rock climbing at all, you may have noticed the increase in no tex holds. These are holds made of smooth plastic with no friction whatsoever. At some point, the higher ups at IFSC realized that rock climbing was just too much fun and had to make no tex holds. Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, the thing's slippery, it's bad, but the part that you actually grab has plenty of friction. Wrong, that's a dual tex hold. A no tex hold is this part, all over. It's, it's genuinely the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Now, athletes prepare for these holds in a number of different ways. Most of the time, they just don't apply chalk at all, but sometimes they go as far as to wash their hands beforehand to make sure there's no chalk whatsoever. Jakob Schubert even took it one step further. This is how COVID started. But what if you didn't need to do this? What if your chalk worked for both textured and non-textured holds? Well, I set out to find the solution to that very problem. I put up two of the best holds you can find in the worst way possible. Two holds, zero texture, and some chalk. All right. Dude. So much worse. It's like. <laughs> That's how I felt. I mean, I don't even think if I use a foot. Yeah, so. Chalk and no text is no bueno. As I expected, the chalk was worthless, but now it was time to give these holds the old Jakob Schubert. I didn't actually spit on my hands. Okay, that's fucking gross. I washed them. All right, just washed my hands. No chalk, no, no chalk, nothing. Uh, this is the, the typical beta for no text. You see uh, Jakob Schubert doing the hawk tua before competition. So this should be the best you can possibly get on these. Oh wait, maybe I can. I'm not racking myself on this thing. Oh. 
It's actually almost doable. It turned out that clean hands performed significantly better than chalked hands, but these holds were still completely unusable. All that was left now was to try the maglock. Extra sticky. Dude. That's like glue on those, like that's nothing. The maglock worked, and I couldn't help but feel like the famous rapper Drake after watching Disney Channel. My hands were all sticky. So what's my overall opinion on the maglock? It's superior to climbing chalk in every way. It has better friction on rock, wood, and no-tex holds, and lasted just as long, if not longer, than your standard climbing chalk. Now there is one big claim about a lot of these silica silylate products that I do want to debunk, which is that they you apply them at the beginning of one session or before any type of workout where you need chalk, and it lasts the whole time. That is absolute bullshit. It's a good product. It's definitely superior to chalk in every way, but it does not last a whole session. Um, I tried this V10 that I was projecting, and on my third go on it, I, I was completely out of chalk. So if you are interested in trying Maglock for the sole purpose of having a chalk that you can apply at the beginning of the session and it lasts the whole time, you'll probably be disappointed. Now that being said, we did run all of these tests again with the Maglock and Magdust on top of it. So the 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 unholy union of the two and it actually outperformed every single time i don't know why i think maybe the maglock just works to strip your hands and get them really dry and sticky and then the chalk's there to absorb anything else that comes out but it won every single time and just to clear something else up for those of you that saw my last video and are wondering why i couldn't hang nearly as long on big bertha this time she had just been cleaned before we filmed that chalk video two years ago so she was fresh clean sparkly girl uh she's a bit of a dirty bitch now right she hasn't been cleaned in a long time so it was really hard to hang i couldn't even hang on her at all without chalk and the last thing i want to talk about is the price um a 75 gram bag of maglock is about $100, which is an insane amount of money for a 75 gram bag of chalk. But there are a couple things to take into account. Like, first of all, the Maglock is about half as dense as standard climbing chalk. So when you're buying a 75 gram bag, it's the equivalent of about 150 grams of chalk. The second big thing is you don't need nearly as much Maglock. I'm talking maybe 25% as much to get a good coating and get your hands dry and sticky as compared to normal chalk. So you could really compare a 75 gram bag of Maglock to something like a 600 gram bag of chalk. So I definitely recommend trying the Maglock. It is superior in every way to regular chalk. Um, you will climb harder, I think at least. We climbed harder on everything. I actually climbed a lot with this stuff on and everything felt much easier. And it's just so much better. It gives you better grip. You don't need as much of it. It doesn't make a mess. It's just, it's just a superior product. Now, even though this video is sponsored by Arunga, I didn't want it to feel like a giant ad, even though it is. Even though silica silylate is still pretty niche in the sport community, I do think it's going to grow quite a bit. I think it's going to be the next big thing, so it was cool to be able to do a video about it. And I just want to say thank you to this video's sponsor, Rumna, for making this video possible and sending me the free mag dust and maglock. If you guys are interested in trying out some of the maglock yourself, you can click the link in the description, go to the Rumna store, and use code DINO to get 10% off anything in the store. You don't even have to buy maglock, because if you order anything in the next 30 days, Rumna is giving out a free 8 gram bag of maglock on orders over $100. So use code DINO and get 10% off chalk, tees, pants, or anything else you want on the Rumna store. Just remember, you can add an 8 gram bag of maglock for free if your order is over $100. Thank you all so much for watching, and if any of you have tried silica silylate yourself, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Also, any of you that know anything about chemistry, and and can help out with any of the stuff that went wrong in this video with my experiments please let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys next time